worship you, almighty, ever-living God, our Father, Spirit, and the Son, we've come to honor you, almighty, ever-living God. This is the day. to worship you, almighty, ever-living God, the one who is and is to come, we turn our eyes to you. David this morning, and we thank David for doing that. Uh, just a few notices. The food bank, um, we still need items in our basket outside. There's a list of items um, which are needed on a sheet on the hall table. Uh, Bible study is at 7.30pm on Thursday here at church. Messy church, don't forget, that begins on the 18th of February at 4.30. Um, food and activities and things. Uh, please mention to any people who, you know, in the area who you know who have children who would probably enjoy this. We do have to come with um, a parent or a guardian. Uh, our clothes racks have been changed, lots of nice items for you to buy. And it is eco-friendly because it's recycling in its best form. Um, baby jackets and other items knitted um, are in the church hall. Um, and it's tea and biscuits after this service, all separated about in the hall. Next week we are at Toll Bar, their service is 10.30, so don't forget it's not um, a day off church, it's a day to come to another church with us, to our friends at Toll Bar, because they do support us. Thank you. <coughs> Good morning and welcome to everyone here today. 
as you can see, you're getting the less pretty of the two clients. <laughs> And a warm welcome to those who are joining us later on Facebook or YouTube. Hello there. Uh, you may wish to have a snack with you while you watch or listen, because we're going to be talking about tasting and see if something's good. Our call to worship is taken from Psalm 19, verses 7 to 11. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are sure and altogether righteous. They are more precious than gold, than, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the comb. By them is your servant warned, in keeping them there is great reward. Now we've been asked to have some hymns that people actually know, so we'll start <laughs> off with that well known staple Lead us, Heavenly Father, lead us. Oh, So let's pray. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of your word. May it be today sweet as honey from the honeycomb and more precious than gold. We thank you, Lord, for this gift. We thank you that it allows us to come before you. We know this is all from you, your gift, that we did not earn. We confess our sins to you now knowing that we can leave it all to you and that you will forgive and clean us. Thank you for the opportunity for worship, for the freedom to come into your presence, <coughs> that the light of your word may illuminate our lives with hope and joy. Thank you that as we enter into worship, we can find a place where we can be at peace in your presence, find healing, wholeness and refreshment. Amen. 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 The next hymn is based on the words in the psalm that immediately precede the stuff that we read out. And it's from the rising of the sun, and it's got actions. Oh, well. So I would love <laughs> you to see. Oh, so, so it's from the rising of the sun, which means you start on your left, to the going down of the same, your right. The Lord's name, right hand up, ah. is to be praised. Okay, pointy one. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord's name 
he's to be praised. And then when he gets to the next bit, he can clap. Uh -huh. <laughs> Take from nearly eight slightly verses, New International Version. All the people came together as one in the square before the water gate. They told Ezra, the teacher of the law, to bring out the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded for Israel. So on the first day of the seventh month, Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, which was made up of men and women, all who were able to understand. He read it aloud from daybreak till noon as he faced the square before the water gate in the presence of the men, women and others who could understand. And all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Ezra, the teacher of the law, stood on a high wooden platform built for the occasion. Ezra opened the book. All the people could see him because he was standing above them. And as he opened it, people all stood up. Ezra praised the Lord, the great God, and all the people lifted their hands and responded, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. They read the book of the law of God, making it clear and giving the meaning so that the people understood what was being read. Then the army, the governor from Ezra the priest and the teacher of the law, and the Levites who were instructed, instructing the people said to them all, This is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people have been weeping as they listened to the words of the law. Naomi said, Go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks, and send some to those who have nothing prepared. This day is, our, is holy to our Lord. Do not grieve. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. Thanks be to God for the reading. <coughs> the second reading is from Luke 4, verses 16 to 22, from the New International Version. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, 
because he has anointed me to pray, proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began by saying to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his lips. Isn't this Joseph's son? they asked. Thanks be to God for this reading of his word. Amen. <coughs> I'm going to talk to you about taste and see. So for those people who are watching this inside the land, then you might like to have something tasty to hand because you might be end up snacking. Let's pray. <coughs> the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord. Amen. Amen. So the situation that the Israelites found themselves in in the Nehemiah reading was as follows. Kingdoms of Israel and Judah were no more and the majority of the people had been sent off to exile in Assyria or Babylon. Eventually Cyrus the Persian had to let some of the people return to Judah. The walls of Jerusalem were breaking down because the Babylonians had smashed their way through and the people were living in the ruins. Then Nehemiah turns up and arranges for everybody to take part in a rebuilding of an entire city. When they completed, sorry, which they had completed, with one half rebuilding, while the other half stood guard over them to protect them from enemies, and then swap over. Finally, the walls are rebuilt, the gates are repaired and rehung, and Jerusalem is a functioning city once again. Not quite. Because now the people had to be rebuilt. So Nehemiah gets them all to assemble in the square by the water gate and sit down. Ezra the priest reads from the book of the law from daybreak until noon. But it's in Hebrew. And the people coming back from Babylon don't all speak, don't all speak Hebrew. So they arrange for a bunch of Levites whose names were... <coughs> carefully left off the reading so that people wouldn't have to go through all the different names, uh, to translate what's being said into the languages of the people that, so they can understand it. They make it accessible for all. Unfortunately, what should have been a joyous combination of all the hard work turning, turned into a crying fest. As people realised what they should have been doing and haven't, or what they shouldn't have been doing and have. What they thought they could get away with, and have now found out it's wrong, and they should stop. But Nehemiah isn't going to leave it there, because this is a celebration. They've got the law back. They've now got the law to guide them, and people should rejoice in the protection of God's word. So he sends them home to enjoy choice foods and sweet drinks and to share it with people who don't have anything prepared so that everyone is rejoicing. His instruction, do not grieve for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So they response, we didn't actually read it there because it's the next verse along. It says, then all the people went away to eat and drink to send portions of food and to celebrate with great joy because they now understood the words that had been made known to them. Okay? So they get an opportunity to encounter God's word and it's a celebration. And they celebrate. Now fast forward to the New Testament. Jesus is in the synagogue and he reads the set portion of scripture for that day, Isaiah 61, verses 1 to 2. Now the people of his day in the synagogue will probably know the scripture by heart. They've read it often enough. It's 
We have every year and enough time for people to have memorised it. Forwards, backwards and sideways. But this time is different. This time Jesus tells them that today, of all days, is no longer a prophecy of the future. Today, of all days, it's fulfilled in their hearing. Now this is dynamite stuff. Jesus has claimed that it's come to pass, and by extension, he is the fulfilment of that scripture. Now the response is underwhelming. They focus on who is saying it, rather than what's being said. As far as they're concerned, this is the same Jesus who run, used to run around as a toddler. Young lad, and he's now an adult. And he is claiming to be the fulfilment of scripture. Capital F, capital S. <coughs> but he's only Joseph. Not very important. He's not an outstanding military man like the Messiah was supposed to be. He's the kid next door. Literally, in some cases. They get furious at him. So much so that they drive him out of town. They take him up to the top of the hill where the village rests, so they can chop him off a cliff. And I've always thought that this is one of the other sudden miracles of Jesus. Because we're told he walked right through the crowd and went on his way. Now, if you've ever seen a baby mob, to just calmly walk through the middle of them and walk off is a miracle in itself. It's not as easy as Luke makes it sound, I would imagine. Okay, so what does that mean? What does this mean for us? We are told that God's word is sweeter than honey, sweeter than the honeycomb more precious than gold. And as Nehemiah demonstrated, reading it should be a celebration and a time of great joy. Like all good meals, there's a need for a balanced diet, and that doesn't mean a pie in each hand. Okay. Some favourite foods, please. Chips. Chips? Egg and chips. Egg and chips. Donuts. Donuts. <coughs> Spaghetti bolognese. Spaghetti bolognese. Hot pot. Hot pot. Like the way you're thinking. With red cabbage. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. 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 Not red cabbage. It's got to be beetroot. Beetroot and red cabbage. Beetroot and red cabbage. No, not red cabbage. Oh, oh, tension. Oh, they're starting to eat tension. So. <laughs> I have spaghetti bolognese. What's mine? Somebody else has spaghetti yeah. bolognese. So yes. So th there's there's a variety of it. Nice, nice. My eight-year-old grandson likes sushi. <laughs> Don't know how he got into this, but no, it's like it means that when, when, when he and I are both eating sushi, we have to fight each other off to get the nice bits. But yeah, but we've got things. We've got fast food. We've got you know, it's like the burgers and <laughs> stuff like that. But there's also the 24-course banquets. Both of them provide nutrition, but you don't have them every single day, hopefully. Um, because, you know, having too much, of, too much of one or too little or whatever is, is unhealthy. George IV had 60. George IV had 60. Yeah. 60 course meals. Exactly. So, so what's the spiritual equivalent of three square meals a day? But the answer is some things we can do to make studying God's word easier to digest. See, those who rarely read it can be put off, because quite often their Bibles are old and dusty, put away in the corner somewhere, and they're written in oldie worldly language, with the these and the thous making it difficult for them to understand. Now, I, I've actually come across people who prefer those versions, because it's what they were brought up with. Mm -hmm. And they understand it, and it's it's a comfort to them. But for a lot of people, it's like. Them. But the response is there are a number of modern English versions that can make the words clearer to understand, easier to digest what's being said, so we get something from it. 
If you read something and you can't understand it, it's not really communicated stuff. If you read something, if you read if you read something else and it's easy to understand, then you go, ah, and it comes in. Now at the other extreme, we've got people who've read it time and time again. And remember that sometimes something comes along and says, this has been fulfilled today. <coughs> and it's easy to discount such revelations because the person who tell the person to tell us this is such an unlikely character that we forget that God can use all of us. I'll quote you an example from a home group I was in years and years ago. And there was somebody there who wouldn't say boo to a goose, and we were lucky if we got three words out of her at any point. And we're reading something from Ephesians, and it goes, and you are sealed with the, with the, pro, with the Holy Spirit, the promise of things to come. And everybody sort of nodded their head because they knew exactly what it meant. And this young lady perked up and went, oh, I like this. It's like God comes along with a big rubber stamp and goes, you're mine, you're mine, you're mine, you're mine. And everybody just stopped and looked at her and went, Yes, that's exactly what it is. Because we've been nodding at it because we knew exactly what it meant, and no, we didn't. She knew what it meant. And she told her. Now, I hate to bring COVID into things, but on a topical note, some of the symptoms of COVID are a loss of taste and smell. Fortunately, I've not experienced this personally, but I've seen it in action. Things taste like cardboard or petrol or have a strange aftertaste. The effect is that it puts a person off their food so they dislike eating. So what should be a pleasurable experience becomes a chore. And for some people, reading God's word has become like a chore. Oh, I have to do it. Oh, I have to do this. And they've lost that enjoyment of just enjoying God. Because there's a scripture that says, be still and know that I am God. You don't have to do anything, you just have to be with him. Fortunately for COVID, eventually the sense of taste comes back and it's possible <coughs> to enjoy food once more. Now, my grandson Ruben, who likes his sushi, is at the moment poorly with COVID. But hopefully when he gets over it, he'll enjoy his sushi again. Now, putting that with God's word, if we lose our taste, it can become like homework. I have to do 14 lines of, of, of reading from the Bible and then I'm done. Instead of saving it, pulling it over, Finding out what it means for us. We can taste and see that the Lord is good. We are told to taste and see that the Lord is good. But just make sure that the meal is something that we like and enjoy. Amen. Amen.
thing I forgot about a good meal is that when you have a good meal, you tell others about it. Now, the spiritual current is that, is when you find something in, in God's Word that really zings with you, let somebody else know. Now let's pray. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of your Word. We thank you that we have free access to it. We pray we may take the opportunity that you present to us. We pray for those countries where this is not possible. Either through lack of opportunity or deliberate policy to keep people from it. We pray for the safety of your people in those nations. We also pray for those who are hurting with COVID, either themselves, family members or friends, and for those with all the other medical issues that have been shunted to one side because there's a global pandemic. Pray for your healing, for your comfort to these people. Pray for those who don't have enough to eat. And we pray for the work of the food banks in dealing with food poverty. We pray for those who have to make the decision between do I eat or do I eat. And we pray for resolution to this problem. Pray for those who are known to us here, Lord, for the silent prayers that you know of in our hearts but are not voiced, for the individuals we know who need your help. But we pray, Lord, also that we may taste and see that you are good, and be still and know that you are God. For in your name we ask all of these things. Amen. Amen. Now let us pray the prayer that Jesus <coughs> taught his disciples, the Lord's Prayer. O oh, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And again, there's only one hymn to, to follow that on from that. You shall go out with joy. <laughs>
sweetness of his presence be with you for the whole week. And may we all meet again on his Sabbath, sharing with each other the joy of the Lord as our strength. close by blessing each other with the words of the grace. Mm -hmm. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore.